Once upon a time, in a certain little town, on a street that had beautiful poplar trees growing along each side of it, was a nice little house. Johnny, who had brown eyes, ears that stood out a little like this, a nose that turned up slightly, that always had a happy smile. I said the mouth always had a happy smile. That's better. <laughs> as well as having a head, of course, arms, and legs, and a body, just like other little boys. And when they were all put together, Johnny looked like this. Well, now that you know what Johnny looks like, I know you want to hear about a very peculiar thing that happened to him one day. The sun was peeping in his window and was getting ready to wake him up. But look at that sun. He looks a bit disgusted at what he sees in Johnny's room, and no wonder. We didn't want to tell you this, but Johnny's a terribly untidy little boy. Did you ever see such an untidy room? His mother had asked him so many times to hang up his clothes and put away his toys. And like all little boys, he had a good self who told him the right things to do. And he knew he should hang up his pajamas. But like most little boys, Johnny also had a bad self. And I don't know why, but Johnny seemed to prefer to listen to this bad self, who told him, Don't be a sissy. Throw your pajamas on the floor. And the bad self won. <sighs> Too bad. Now, of course, the bathroom's nice and clean and tidy. Johnny's mother keeps it that way. But does Johnny help her? Well, not exactly. Johnny like, But his good self tells him he knows he doesn't have to have fun that way. It makes his mother very unhappy. And good self might have won his argument if that bad, bad self had not come up with the old argument. Ah, don't be a sissy, he told Johnny. Make all the mess you want. And why? Just splash a little water on yourself and dry it off. Nobody will know the difference. And what's the good of cleaning your teeth? Unless, of course, you could have some fun with the toothpaste. But wait, cried Good Self. Stop. Just look at the mess you've made. You'll get worse and worse. If you don't mend your ways, you'll turn into a pig for sure. Just as your mother said. Pig snorted Johnny. Ah, don't be silly. But even as he hurried off to breakfast, his hands and feet became little pig's trotters. And though Good Self knew this was bound to happen, he was very sad to see such a nice little boy making such a pig of himself. Of course, Bad Self was just tickled pink. Another one over on him. As Johnny rushed into breakfast, he had no idea that his hands and feet were, you know what. But then why should he? With table manners like this, his mother, of course, was most unhappy to see him slurp and spill his food this way. But Johnny paid no attention to what she said. He thought he was a regular fellow. He had the mistaken idea that being neat and well-mannered was like being a sissy. That was why when his good self popped up to remind him that all this bad behavior was going to lead nowhere, Johnny gave him an argument. Ah, said Johnny. And of course, no polite little boy says, ah, in just that way. Ah, I don't want to be polite. I want to be a ball player or a soldier. Well, you won't be either one, said Good Self. You'll just be a pig. This pig business was beginning to worry Johnny. And for a moment, he began to wonder if he'd better change his ways. Don't be silly, said Bad Self, popping into the picture again. What does it matter how you eat as long as you eat plenty to make you strong? Now that sort of reasoning seemed to appeal to Johnny, and he continued to eat as rudely as ever. Be careful, said Good Self. You're going too far. Ah, hurry up, said Bad Self. Show him your boss around here. Then Johnny licked his plate and wiped his mouth with his sleeve. He's getting to be more and more of a pig, murmured Good Self. This, of course, was just what Bad Self wanted. He knew he could get Johnny into even worse trouble if he could just get Good Self out of the way. 
Look out. Too late. As soon as Johnny got outside the house, he ran as fast as he could to the baseball field. And as he approached the field, he saw that the game had already started. This made him very angry because his bad manners and his rudeness had, quite naturally, made him also a very selfish little boy. Give me the bat, he said to Tommy. I want a bat first. The other boys could hardly believe that one of their friends could be such a bad sport and such a bully. Don't be a pig, they called. See, even your friends think you're a pig, said Good Self. And no wonder. Snatching the bat away from little Tommy is the most terrible thing you've done yet. Ah, why not take the bat, shouted Bad Self. You're bigger than he is, aren't you? Right, said Johnny the pig. Let's get on with the game. But the tale doesn't end here. Play ball, shouted Johnny. Mickey threw a fast one. Wham! And the ball sailed through the air. As Johnny ran, touched first base, and rushed on, the ball was thrown into Billy, who caught it on second base. You're out, shouted Billy. And Johnny was out by a mile. But Johnny didn't like that. He didn't want to be out. I'm not out, I'm not out, he screamed at Billy. Poor Billy just blinked. Anybody could see that Johnny was out by a mile. Billy started to explain it, but he just got pushed around for his trouble. Well, that was more than the other boys could stand. They were all good sports, and like all regular fellows, they couldn't stand a bully or someone who wanted his own way all the time. They told Johnny he was a big bully. You're nothing but a pig, they said. And naturally, they wouldn't have anything more to do with him. Would you? Hm, said Johnny. They all say I'm a pig. They're crazy. That's what Johnny said. But do you think they were crazy? Bad Self laughed and laughed as he saw what he'd done to Johnny. Good Self decided it was time to do something about it. As for Johnny, he began to feel pretty unhappy. All his friends had left him, and he had that empty feeling that everyone gets when they've been terribly selfish. There was nothing for him to do but go home. On his way, he passed a farmyard where there were some little pigs. He couldn't stand the sight of them. He hurried on his way. He had no idea, of course, the pigs were following him until oink, oink, they said right behind him. Shoo, shoo, said Johnny to the pigs. Go on, go on home. But the little pigs just stood there and smiled at him. They thought this was fun. They'd never seen a pig with clothes on. Johnny was pretty worried by this time. So he started to run. The pigs ran right behind him. So he ran faster. And the faster Johnny ran, the faster the pigs ran. So Johnny ran still faster. He'd never run so fast before. Puffing and blowing, he arrived at last at his home, swung in the gate, and slammed it shut. Only then did he feel safe from those terrifying little pigs. In the garden, he found his little dog, Rover, lying asleep under a bush, waiting for him. Johnny smiled again. Let his friends call him a pig. Let them walk away from him. Rover was a true friend. Rover wouldn't let him down. <whistles> Hi, Rover, he called. The dog awakened as soon as he heard that familiar sound. Oh, boy, said Rover to himself. Johnny's here to play with me. And off he ran to greet his little master. <whistles> Whoa, said Rover. What is that funny looking thing that sounds like Johnny? Rover decided he didn't know. But whatever it was, he didn't like it. He ran like a flash with howls of dismay sped like a rocket toward the bushes and disappeared. Cautiously, he peeped out and blinked. <laughs> Johnny tried hard to stop a tear from rolling down his cheek. This was the hardest blow of all. Little Rover, whom he'd raised from a pup, with whom he'd romped and played for years, had deserted him. He could stand everything else, but this was too much. He would have to find his mother. Would she run away from him? He'd been very rude and very disobedient. Yes, he'd better see his mother. On the way through the hall, Johnny passed the mirror. Huh? Who was that? Who's that funny looking creature? He looked at it this way. He looked at it that way. And he looked at it the other way. <gasps> it's me, Sovereign Catfish. Ma, ma, he yelled. 
Now he really had to find his mother quickly. Oh, mother, mother, he said, I've turned into a pig. No one will have anything to do with me, not even Rover. Oh, mother, I've turned into a pig. Well, of course you have, said his mother. You've turned into a pig because you preferred to act like one. <laughs> I didn't want to be a pig, said Johnny. I, I, just, I just don't want to be a, a sissy. So that's it, his mother said. You're afraid of being a sissy. Well, just let me show you something. And she turned on the movie projector. Do you know who those men are? Asked Johnny's mother. Sure, they're West Point cadets, answered Johnny. That's right. And see how smartly they march. Notice how clean and well-kept their uniforms are. Do you think they're sissies? Well, no, Johnny agreed they couldn't be sissies. Then said his mother, if the future generals of the United States can keep clean, you should too. Johnny thought about that and agreed it was probably so. But he added, if I had a uniform like that and were a West Point cadet, I would naturally keep myself clean. Mm-mm, said his mother. Things like that just don't happen. These young men earned the right to be cadets by being clean and well-mannered first. You can't change from being dirty and bad-mannered into being clean and well-mannered all of a sudden. You can't? And Johnny seemed worried. Well, said his mother, if you made up your mind to try very hard, perhaps you could. In the academy, in the barracks rooms where they live, the cadets study hard and practice being orderly, clean, and tidy. These young men know that without good manners, they will never be good officers. And it's the same thing at Annapolis, where Uncle Sam trains his naval officers. Nobody leans on the table or slurps his food here. Here's the Navy football squad. But good manners are not forgotten on the playing field. The men learn to tackle hard and to tackle fairly. and how to kick, and how to develop their muscles. But they also learn that while it is important to win, it doesn't matter if they lose as long as they've played their best and can lose with a smile. Watch this man score, and remember that good sportsmanship is something that everyone admires, and good sportsmanship is acting to others the way you'd like them to act to you. So remember, Johnny, if you want to play ball like this and get a cheer like this, play fair, play for the team and never, never act like a pig. Oh boy, said Johnny, that was a wonderful movie. Now I know exactly what to do. Well, said his mother, now's the time to begin then. Because once you've made up your mind to do something, you must act immediately. As Johnny rushed away, you could see that he felt better already. He ran up the stairs as fast as he could and entered his room. No wonder I turned into a pig, he said as he looked around. Quickly, he gathered up all his clothes he'd left scattered around and hung them up neatly in his closet, just as he'd seen the cadets do. Then he picked up and put away his toys in the toy box. On the way out, he paused at the door to see if everything was ship -shape, as the midshipman would say. And as he looked around the clean and tidy room, he felt happier than he'd ever felt before. Suddenly, he noticed that his pig's trotters were once more his own hands and feet. Oh, boy, he exclaimed. I'm turning into a little boy again. And he was so encouraged that he hurried even faster to get on with the job. In the bathroom, he hung up each towel in its place, put everything back where it belonged, and yes, sir, he even put the cap back on the toothpaste. Yes, sir, said Johnny. I must admit that certainly is an improvement. So he thought it was time to see if he showed any improvement. And sure enough, he could see a lot of changes for the better. Now, nothing could stop him. A fellow couldn't become a cadet or a midshipman all of a sudden. He wondered why he hadn't realized that before. At lunchtime, Johnny sat up straight at the table as he'd been taught to do, arranged his napkin properly, and instead of reaching for the food, asked his mother to pass it for him. This time there was no slurping or spilling or splashing of food. Johnny was eating like a little gentleman, 
and proud of the fact that he knew how to do so. Johnny, said Good Self, popping up again, you look more and more like yourself. Johnny grinned as he wiped his mouth with a napkin. Just remember, continued Good Self, that any drip can be a pig. It takes a smart guy not to be one. Roger, said Johnny. And what do you know? His pig's ears disappeared. Don't be a dope, cried Bad Self. You're gonna have more fun taking my advice. Do you want to be a sissy? Being polite and well-mannered is not being a sissy, said Johnny. Listening to you doesn't get a fella anywhere. And he dropped Bad Self into the sugar bowl. Good for you, cried Good Self, as Johnny excused himself and left the table. And just in case Bad Self should cause any more trouble, he jumped on the lid and sat on it. Well, said Good Self, that takes care of that. And it certainly seemed to. When Johnny arrived at the ball game, the boys were not a bit pleased to see him. Hi, fellas, said Johnny. But the fellas hardly said a word. The boys expected trouble. But Johnny went over to little Tommy and said, here, use my new bat. Then he went over to Jimmy and said, here, try my new mitt. Well, what do you make of it, Ted asked Bobby. I don't know, answered Bobby. But if he wants to play fair, we'll let him play. As the game got going, the boys were more than glad to have Johnny playing with them. He was always on the job, and he played for the team. But when it came Johnny's turn at bat, a shiver of excitement ran through all the boys. So far, Johnny had been a good sport. How would he act now? The ball came sailing fast and straight toward the plate. Bam! Johnny socked it with all his might, and the ball went winging way, way, way over the field. It looked like a home run for sure. Johnny went zipping around the bases, and as he passed third base, the ball was fielded. The fielder fumbled with it for a moment, then threw it into home base. And Johnny and the ball seemed to arrive at the same moment. You're out, shouted Jimmy in great excitement. And this time the boys were ready in case Johnny put up another argument. But they didn't know our new Johnny. Shake, said Johnny to Jimmy. That was a good catch. I thought I was safe, but I was too busy running to see. If you say I'm out, I'm out. That's the kind of sportsmanship the boys like to see. And they were so happy to see Johnny a good sport again, they cheered him all around the field. And because he was, they then and there elected him captain of the team. Well, of course, there was no pig left in Johnny, so his snout disappeared, too. Hooray for our side, said Good Self. I knew you'd do it. Then Johnny home as fast as he could go, leaped over the garden fence and found Rover waiting for him. Good old Rover was overjoyed after looking like a man. And grinning as only a dog can grin, followed Johnny as he'd always done. Mother, mother called Johnny as he came bounding into the house. What is it, she said. I just want to tell you, said Johnny, that it's really...